Trading synthetic positions sounds complex, exotic, and hard to understand. I said it's complicated. But the reality is that once you understand a few concepts, it's really not that difficult to incorporate the concept of synthetic positions into your trading. In this video, I hope to demystify some of these concepts and help you decide whether these techniques can be useful for you. First, what is a synthetic? In the world of finance, a synthetic position is an exact copy of a natural position. Take diamonds, for instance, synthetic diamonds. Now, I'm not talking about cubic zirconia or any other fakes. I'm talking about a lab-grown real diamond. I'm showing images of two different diamonds on the screen right now. Can you tell which one is lab-grown versus which one came out of the ground? They are physically, chemically, and optically the exact same. A synthetic position has the exact same risk profile as a natural position. So like the two diamonds in our analogy, a stock position and a synthetic stock position are essentially identical. One of the reasons we like derivatives at Tactical Income is because they're based in math. Derivatives, like options, allow for the creation of synthetic positions. Well, synthetic positions provide a lot of benefits to market participants. They can help increase liquidity, allow for easier position adjustments, and be used for hedging, and in fact are one of the primary tools market makers use to hedge away risk. Let me share a couple of examples of commonly used synthetic positions, and then we'll look at how all of this works. This first example is often called a risk reversal, but it's actually a synthetic stock position. This is what a profit and loss chart looks like on a stock position. As you can see, if the stock goes up, we make money, and if the stock goes down, we lose. Now I'm going to replicate this position using options. By buying an at the money call and selling an at the money put, I have created essentially the exact same position as we can see on this graph. If we analyze the math, we can see that selling a put has risk to the downside, just like a stock, but only limited upside. Buying a call has unlimited upside just like buying a stock. Combining the at the money short put and the at the money long call replicates a stock position exactly. Well, let's take a look at another synthetic. Well, take just a minute and think about what trade this profit and loss graph might represent. If you said bull put spread, you'd be correct. You'd also be correct if you said bull call spread. You'd also be correct if you said a protective caller trade. All three of those positions are synthetically identical. Look closely at these three profit and loss graphs. A bull call spread, a bull put spread, and a protective caller all on the same stock. For all intents and purposes, they are the exact same trade. So let's look at how these relationships work and what makes it all possible. I'm gonna introduce something that I was taught years ago called the synthetic triangle. Well, here's how it works. Any two outside positions equal the opposite inside position. For example, a long call plus a short put equals a long stock. The same is true for inside the triangle. Combining any two inside positions equals the opposite outside position. For example, a short call plus a long put equals a short stock. So now that we've covered what a synthetic position is, gone over a couple of examples and introduced the synthetic triangle, how can we use this in the real world? Let me show you an example I run into somewhat frequently in the real world. Let's say we put a trade on Tesla stock on October 30th. The stock looked like it was at a major support level and could bounce, so we put a 200-205 bull call spread on the stock. The spread cost $2.25 per share. On a $5 spread, that means we could make as much as $2.75 per share. Over the last four trading days, Tesla's got up much faster than expected. Now, this should be a good thing, right? We should be showing a profit. But in the real world, it's not showing any profit at all. How come? It's because these calls are now deep in the money. The distance between the bid and the ask has widened, making it difficult to get out for any kind of profit. 
To close this trade, we'd normally place a bear call spread. After all, that's how you close a bull call spread. You just reverse what you did to open it. But the distance between the bid and the ask on this spread has widened to $3.25. That's a 65% spread. And closing the traditional way would eat our entire profit. And we could just hold until expiration and hope that the stock stays above our sold strike for that long so that we can get maximum profit. But this is Tesla stock we're talking about here. It's 50% more volatile than the S&P. We really don't want to have to wait unless we have no other choice. So is there a way we could synthetically close this position? Yes. Earlier in the video, I demonstrated that a call spread and a put spread are the same thing. So what we're going to do is close this trade by entering a bear put spread that corresponds to the bull call spread that we already purchased. Look at that PL graph. It looks a little bit crazy, but what we've done is locked in a profit of $161, which is $1.61 per share. Now that's not our full profit, but it is almost 60% of our maximum we could make in only four trading days, and we have no more risk of loss. Well, let's look at how this works. We entered a bull call spread by purchasing the 200 strike call and selling the 205 strike call. After the stock moved in our favor, we entered the corresponding bear put spread. Well, the bull call cost us 225. The bear put cost us $1.14 for a total cost of $3.39. No matter where the stock ends up at expiration, we're going to end up buying the stock for $200 and selling it for $205, making us $5 on the stock. Well, that leaves us with a net profit of $1.61 per share. If the stock ends up above 205, the puts expire worthless. We exercise our long call at 200 and get called away at 205. If the stock ends up below 200, the calls expire worthless. We get assigned the stock at 200 and exercise our right to sell it at 205. If the stock ends up between 200 and 205, we exercise our right to buy the stock at 200 and our right to sell at 205. So no matter where the stock goes, we've locked in a profit. To be clear, this does mean we end up holding the position either through expiration or in the event of early exercise. So we can't just ignore it. We have to manage it and pay attention. But there is no more risk of loss if the stock for any reason suddenly crashes against us. This is just one example of how professional traders use their understanding of put call parity and synthetic positions to manage their portfolios. I could go through a bunch of different types of adjustments we could do using synthetics, but that would probably make this video really long and really boring. Insert your joke about being boring already here. Synthetic trading is not a magic bullet. We can't fix every loser just by using a synthetic. If a position is losing money, a synthetic adjustment isn't going to miraculously fix it. What synthetics do allow us to do is be more flexible with our trading, manage our risk more easily, and sometimes open and close positions that would be difficult to do otherwise. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks for watching.